Welcome to our last episode with regards to the Canadian NHL team's prospect watch. Uh, we'd say last, uh, but not least, but yeah, it's the least. It's the Vancouver Canucks. <laughs> uh, at the beginning of the year, they were ranked 20th. I think that's probably since changed because like two graduated and one got traded away. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like really the only two prospects that are still up or not up with the team quite yet but like still part of the team is like michael di pietro and uh yoni yurmo is what this website is telling me we were using the same website man the hockey writers one that we've oh, used yeah, yeah. In, in years in, in videos past so if you guys want to check out the website which obviously will be in the description below as as per usual so let's be honest here man like <clears throat> First off, I would like to point out the the Vancouver Canucks have a really nice, good young team. Man. Like they have what Quinn Hughes, Elias Patterson, Bo Horvat, still pretty young. Like it's a good young team. Thatcher Demko, unbelievable goalie. So like the prospect pool might be a little dimmer, I guess, shallower. But it is it's it's because most of them have graduated. You know, even like Rathbone, who's supposedly uh, still a prospect. And then they have that uh, Podzlingus kind of kid. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's so like looking at their the top 10 prospects that they have. They have a goalie in Di Pietro who's honestly supposed to be pretty decent, man. Like I, I remember him playing in the juniors. He was huge in the juniors. Huge in the juniors. But I don't know. I don't know what to... I guess it's also the, the guy with, with the numbers, so he'll pull them up in a second here to tell you about them. But if I do recall, so Di Pietro is a smaller guy. I don't think he'll be like a star goalie in the league, but I think he'll be a good, competent backup. And w- with that being said, like he's he's part of their prospect pool. So looking here are the top ten prospects from hockey writers from the beginning from the beginning of this year. Okay, so there will be two or three that are no longer in there because they were either traded away or they graduated. Similar to how Bouchard was still a prospect for the Oilers, he's no longer obviously a prospect. So, their number 10 overall is William Lockwood, a third round pick out of the 2016 draft. He's playing in the AHL now. He's obviously, uh, what was he going to say? Yeah, he, he's, he's he's not super young anymore. I'll just put no. it that way. I mean, they're still young. They're both younger than us. And <laughs> he's, yeah, definitely. <laughs> and he's, he's decent. Right now, nine points in 15 games. In the AHL, though, right? The AHL, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, good, he, he's good. he's a right shot forward, man. He, he doesn't seem like he's a huge player. Um, I mean, the previous year, he had 11 points in 24 games in the AHL. Like, I don't know. He's not going to be a, a monster offensive talent. Um, yeah. To put to put it that way, but uh, he's going to be a bottom six forward yeah. uh, in the NHL. And I it think. did bring up uh, Di Pietro's uh, numbers. He's plain average in ten games. He has a three point two four goals against and a point eight nine seven save percentage. So it's in the AHL. In the AHL, AHL has a lot is a lot tougher of a lead yeah. for goalies, man, because you don't have a good defense in front of you typically. Most yeah. of the players too are getting called up. Yeah, so. That's still pretty decent. That's not still bad. pretty good. It's not bad. Yeah. yeah. And then, so William Lockwood, again, is projected to be a bottom six forward. Um, he's, a, he's a great skater, apparently, and he's a pest. He's a he's an annoying pest. It's perfect for bottom six, like a checking kind of player. So, and you got to have those kinds of players. 100%. Yeah. Uh, that's what the Oilers are missing. Yeah. I hate how we always talk. I, I always bring the Oilers. I apologize. <laughs> but it's just But it's true, just though. like you need <laughs> that kind of player, 100%. Yeah. Like, a lot of teams are missing that. But, but since we're... Oilers fans, we kind of compare it to to them, and how we're uh, we're missing them. And Lockwood is, I guess, becoming that kind of player. Yeah, he'll be a good addition in like their bottom six, and like next year, or the year after, just to be an annoying, like a puck retriever past kind of thing, yeah. just to like, get underneath the other people's skins. Next, at number nine is Jet Wu. A right Love defense. That name. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? What a kick ass <laughs> name, dude. Uh, second round pick out of the 2018 draft, 37th overall. He's a defenseman, obviously, so he doesn't put up massive points. Uh, but last year was his first year pro. He put up five points in 28 games for the Utica Comets. Um, this Again, this is all from the hockeywriters.com. This is where we're getting this uh, information from. And but, then from, I'm getting mine from eliteprospects.com. 
And right now he has seven points in 17 games. He's more of a defensive kind of guy, though, I'm yeah. noticing. Like, so. it's, he, he, paired, he was paired with Jack Rathbone last year. Rathbone's, like, more of a two-way defender. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, oh, this is interesting. So, hockey prospecting has dropped his chances of making the NHL from 70 to 61%. That is interesting. Right? But, anyways, he's... He's like I don't know. I mean, he'll he'll probably his peak is probably like a number six or a seven defenseman on an NHL team, uh, that or a perennial AHL defenseman. Really, I mean, I don't know. Like to be an NHL defenseman, you need to have a, a stupid amount of skill, and even like the defensive guys like need to have just be ridiculous. So, so kind of like a uh, kind of like a uh, like a Tyler Benson kind of person, where like. He's a good AHLer, but he'll get called up every once in a while. Kind Maybe. Of. Well, like not Benson fill is up for playing, the, but yeah, like to, f- for, to fill in for the, some for, injuries. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or COVID. Like a Brad Malone kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, like just depth guys that you need yeah. to have in your system. That's he's the kind of player. <laughs> he's the kind of guy, though, that he if there's no like big injuries, like he would really come up if there's a, an injury to a specific defenseman on the Canucks, like a defensive defenseman. He wouldn't come up if it's like Quinn Hughes gets injured or something, you know what I mean? Like yeah. he so like I can see if he doesn't get called up a couple times, like I can I can genuinely see him I don't know, flying over to Europe and going getting playing some like top four minutes in Europe and, you know, probably making more money too. Probably. So uh next we have center, Dmitry Zoldiev. Obviously Russian. Uh, a sixth-round pick in the 2020 draft, playing in the VHL and the MHL, so developmental leagues over in Europe. Um, he, was a, he, not, he was not a point-per-game player in either one of those leagues. So he's like it was a late-round pick. They're saying he's a little bit of a, like, a pretty, pretty good steal. Um, like a penalty killer kind of guy, like a third-line center, really, like a penalty killer checking kind of guy. Um, in that bottom six for for the Canucks, mm-hmm. um, great penalty or sorry, great face off uh, guy so far throughout his career. Again, yeah, your number your number like five through ten prospects are going to be like bottom pairing defensemen, bottom six forwards. But like every NHL team needs them, so hopefully these guys can develop properly for Vancouver to become there. But truthfully, like I, I guess we're like looking a little too too ahead of ourselves right now, but. In their prospect pool right now, they don't have any elite players. I think of all of the Canadian teams with the prospects, I think they have the fewest elite prospects on there. Like players that will be either potential top four or top two, top pairing defensemen or like top, top six, six forward. I think like we've or or top goalie, right? Like mm-hmm. Di Pietro, in my opinion, will be a backup, a perennial backup, similar to like what Brassois is. I think Di Pietro would be similar to what Laurent Brassois is right now for Vegas, I guess, right? Yeah. Just playing when he has to. Thatcher Demko is the future of this team. So, I, I like, Thatcher Demko will play 65 to 70 games a year. And then Di Pietro would come in and play the other, like, I don't just know, to give Demko 12, a break. Yeah. 12 to 17 games. Yeah. Just to give no back to backs for Demko. Yeah. And then, but that's, like, that's it, though, you know, like, they have good depth pieces, and good thing that they're, you know, they're good, talented forwards are all young, but, like, they're already having cap complications now. I can't imagine what it's going to be in four or five years when, like, you know, the Patterson contract, he didn't sign a full extension, didn't he? It was, like, a, it was a shorter It term. was a shorter yeah. contract, yeah. So that's going to be tough for, for them to keep, and they need Patterson, man. And they're playing themselves out of the lottery pick right now. Like... Yeah, we'll see. They they need a depth. They need a depth. Or sorry, draft scoring depth. That's what I meant to say. You know what I mean? Like they they get the high skilled players, similar to like Montreal focused on that recently in in the drafting of like Cole Caulfield and like just the scoring oh, okay. kind of wingers. Yeah, yeah. Like Calgary got that in Zari when they drafted him, and then like really good middle six forwards is what Calgary ended up getting. Toronto with uh, Robertson in the second mm-hmm. round. Like they got guys that had have offensive upside. Vancouver so far gotten guys who can have really solid bottom six defensive and checking and pesty uh, upside, I guess, but not like the offensive talent that they're going to need to fill out. Like if there's an injury in their top six, they're pretty much screwed. Let's not even kid ourselves, yeah. right? 
Meanwhile, like most of the other Canadian teams have guys that can come up and provide that. Perfetti for Winnipeg. Yes. Right? Holloway for the Oilers. You know what I mean? Like everybody has that. Vancouver doesn't have that. They have like the gold blue can kid. I'll mention that later. Um, but like, oh yeah, I'll mention it at, at a later time, obviously. But anyways, moving on. Number seven of their prospect is Danila, Danila Klimovic. Right wing. Playing in Belarus, actually. Very interesting. He played uh, in the QMJHL. Yeah. He got um, 52 points in 37 games in last year. He was a second-round pick of the 2021 draft. Nice. And he was a bit of a reach, they're saying. So they traded their top 10 pick, which could have been Dylan Gunther, but they traded that pick to Arizona in like the that massive, the big blockbuster they had this last season where they got uh, OEL, Oliver Ackman. Garland, okay, yeah, yeah. In Garland, yeah, they traded that pick. They could have used Gun- Gunther; would have been the offensive threat that they Another needed in that lineup. King. Another oil king, yeah. But you know, there's four oil kings going to the juniors during yeah. Canada. Isn't that nuts? That's yeah, pretty. Cool. We traded for one of them, Gooley, but so that that was kind of yeah, that was kind of a a cheaty kind of way of getting another oil king in the yeah. world juniors. But so this Danila Klimovich kid, like he was a breach. They, I mean, he was projected to go in the third or fourth, even later oh, okay. picks. If I'm not mistaken, they he does have some offensive upside. Is is from my understanding, he's got some decent offensive upside. However, it wasn't like there's a lot of there. Well, there's a there's lot that of things been. that well, there's a lot of growth that he needs to do. Oh, there's okay. nothing wrong with having to grow. Everybody needs oh, to grow yeah. and develop. Exactly, but there's a lot of growth. Like right now in the AHL, uh, after 18 games, he has eight points. So. Not bad. Yeah, decent. Decent. I mean, it's not terrible, but it is. It's not exceptional. Because you know, second round pick, you want him putting up points. Second round, you know yeah. I mean? Second round pick is a is a depth scoring option, middle six forward, ideally. Ideally, middle six forward or second or third pairing defenseman. That's how you ideally draft. Um, you know, first round picks are supposed to be difference makers on your team, right? Whether it be a top six forward, you know, a scoring winger. Um, a shutdown defenseman, or a, you know, a puck moving defenseman, or, or uh, a good like a goal, starting yeah. goalie. Yeah. That will be like that's a first round pick. Essentially, you need Basically a first round pick future. coming up every single time. Yeah. Second round pick is more like you ideally get a good depth piece. You obviously get the best player available. Now that's like a solid winger, like uh, like who? Marshawn was in the second round, wasn't he? Pasternak was in the second round too. Like there's some elite players that have come out of the second round you still have a chance yeah but anyways he's he's per, he's looking to be a middle six forward not necessarily top six he's he's for me he's gonna be a middle six forward he's he's like he, he's got a good shot man like he's He's but like he's just got a lot to improve on you know what I mean like a lot of different and he's things. still very young so yeah. he still has time he's only 18 so he has time to develop yeah that's fair and then next you have uh, Jonah Gad Gadjovic right winger second round pick from 2017 he he, I mean, he played for the Canucks he played one game last year for the Canucks and yeah he, it looks like he was part of their uh, taxi squad that they had. But how's he? He was pretty good, you know. Um, what was it? Pretty much a point per game kind of guy in the AHL. How's he doing this year? I am trying to look that up. He's a big dude. He's a physical player, a big guy. He can be like, a, you know what? Uh, What's his face? He used to be a Chase on. What Chase on's doing on the power play right now? Like the big net front presence that can get the grindy goals. I think that's what Gadovich is going to be like. A, a type of player like him he's not an elite offensive talent I don't think but he gets like the grindy goals so he can be like the he could be a, th- a good third winger or third person option in like you know how like the Sedins had like just a random winger playing with him occasionally yeah okay like he could be one of those guys that could fit in like a really good complimentary guy just like a Besser and a uh, Pedersen so but we'll see I mean I I, I I do know, I see that his name has been up with the Canucks so far this season. I'm almost positive he's been, like, part of the roster right now. And he's uh, just, like, healthy scratching most games. Yeah, I, I honestly, I can't I can't find too, too much on him. All I know is that he's a, he's a bigger guy. He's put up some decent numbers in the AHL last year. And 
I don't know. Just go from there, really. Yeah. Next is Aiden McDonough, left wing, playing out of Northeastern University in NCAA. Putting up big numbers there, but he's like, again, remember how we spoke about in years past where it's like the the NCAA, you, you got to be putting up more than a point per game to be a good offensive threat in the NHL. Mm-hmm. He's not. He's at just he's under just a point under. per game. Yeah. Yeah. So, even then, you know, like... He's, I guess he wasn't necessarily projected to be like a, an elite, but he's like sh- an elite kind of guy. Seventh round pick in 2019. So, yeah, one of the last picks in the draft. But, I mean, he's he's doing okay. Just the fact that he's like developing into like a, a, a decent forward. Mm-hmm. I think he has a chance in making the NHL. Again, it wouldn't be as an elite first line, second line winger. But maybe but like, like a, a middle six kind of guy yeah. that can put some depth and give you a little bit of scoring out of your third line. Then Di Pietro, Mike Di Pietro, is their number fourth rank or fourth ranked prospect, a third round pick out of twenty seventeen. Again, you were mentioning earlier he's like an eight nine seven save percentage this year. Yeah, it's like not great. Yeah. Previous year he had a nine sixteen save percentage. I don't know what else to say, man. Like he's, I, I I don't know what else to say that we haven't said already. He hadn't. He's been. He was unreal lights out for the junior team. But like, juniors is different than NHL. Than NHL or AHL, right? right? He's also a shorter goalie, if I'm not mistaken. I I don't know why I'm thinking. Like I thought he was like five foot something, but he's just he's six foot, just over, like just six foot. But it's a shorter goalie for NHL standards, right? Yeah, a shorter guy for NHL standards. But I don't know. He's got really good reflexes. Obviously, you need to be good reflexes to be an NHL goaltender. But his size will be a downfall, so he has to overcompensate. He has to compensate for that for in, in other ways. I think he can, for sure, he can. But I don't see him being an elite goalie. I don't even see him being a starter. I see him being a pretty good backup, a, a better backup than Koskinen. No. But I can see him giving you like a couple starts if need be. Uh, if your goalie's injured or you know or just not it playing just well, you can go in there for that too. Yeah, and competing for. A job in the NHL, but I I don't think he will be um, an elite goalie by any means. Anyways, their third prospect on here is Ole Uolevi, but he's gone. He he's, got traded yeah. this year, so we're not going to even touch base on him. And then the, yeah, I guess their top two are already up in the NHL. Rathbone, fourth round pick out of twenty seventeen. He's playing in the NHL right now as their third pairing slash number seven guy. And then Vasily Pods Colson. First round pick in the 2019 draft, and he is yeah currently in the NHL right now. I think he's like their second line or third line right wing right now. We'll see. Yeah, man. I mean, not a lot of elite offensive talent really, or really elite defensive. These guys have a lot like big, like their third and fourth line should be pretty damn good for years to come. And that's I guess that's a good way of building your team. Really, you just you have entry level contracts in your bottom six to be able to pay the top six the money. So I guess it's kind of smart the way that they're doing it right now, but I don't know, man. Like, you, just, you need to keep those top six. Like with the Pedersen contract, you yeah. don't know what they're going to do. And they're going to probably have to start drafting a little bit smarter if for some reason Pedersen decides to, to leave. I mean, they need to draft smarter, but they need to be able to have picks to be able to draft smarter so they just can't trade away all their picks yeah they need another first rounder let's not even kid ourselves they need their next couple two to three first round picks in order to just you know be like competent like solidify their like yeah system this this honestly next year's prospect watch i guess is like the hockey writers i can see them being in the bottom five of the league for vancouver yeah and they're at 20 right they're 20th right now I can see. That. I see them going down like seven spots at least. Yeah, you know, I mean, Pittsburgh's always had bad prospects, but it's because they trade all of them away, and because Crosby's that good that they just play well, right? Um, and Pittsburgh just finds incredible like young free agents to come in and just fill. Some, I don't know. Like, Pittsburgh is just the model NHL team on like develop bringing up players out of nowhere. But anyways, anything else you want to touch base on with regards to the Canucks? No, not really. their best young players are currently in the NHL, so they don't have many big young guys. Like if they have a lot of injuries, they're kind of screwed for offensive talent, I guess. Um, which, yeah, I mean, if no injuries, that's a really good team, man. 
some injuries, yeah, they're done. Yeah. So. Anyway. They just got to stay healthy. Yep, got to stay healthy. Not fun. a lot of depth in the in the farm system. Let's just put it that way. Thank you, everybody, for listening to our final Canadian Prospect Watch episode of the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, I do think, yeah, in my opinion, Vancouver's got the weakest farm team of, uh, or the weakest prospect pool of, of the Canadian teams, even behind Toronto. Toronto has, like, Robertson would be the best prospect of both yeah. teams anyways. So. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Let's finish off with this really quick, actually. Okay. Who is the best prospect pool in the in, in of the Canadian teams, in your opinion, right now? For me, it's Ottawa. I think a lot of the guys are in the NHL right now, but I still think Ottawa has the best prospects. And then Calgary, I was going to say Calgary, maybe. Round out the top three. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, my pick was going to be Calgary, Ottawa, and then Edmonton. So and I think the, is pretty Winnipeg would be in the middle, and then, uh, and then I'm saying... Uh, Montreal, Toronto, and Vancouver. Mm-hmm. Yep. Cool. There you go. We give our own now. So <laughs> thanks everybody for listening and yeah, we'll see you later.